My Rails people, welcome. <laughs> My fellow Rails brethren, welcome. Um, no, but seriously, uh, honestly, you know, thanks for coming to the second annual Axis Conference. Uh, I hope if you, I see a lot of familiar faces from last year, and I hope you're enjoying the venue a lot more than the last one. Um, so. Uh, put that off there. Um, and really, I mean, without you guys coming, you know, we would have no reason whatsoever to put this on. It'd be kind of boring if it was me uh, only. So thank you all very much for coming today. And someone that I also really want to uh, point out are our sponsors. You know, times are not exactly the, the easiest right now. Companies are cutting back. And all of our sponsors, um, you know, really, uh, really helped us out by you know, making this entire thing possible. So a big thank you to them, especially our platinum sponsors, uh, Engine Yard, New Relic, and AT&T Interactive. Um, New Relic and Engine Yard are both here, uh, out there, so please go and talk to them and say hello and find out what they got. So also, uh, real quick about New Relic. New Relic has a free uh, trial of their RPM Gold uh, product. And if you put in the code AAC2009, then you'll get a free 30-day trial of that. Also, they've told me that they will be having drinks at the bar. And you have to bring your Access Conference badge, uh, but then you'll be getting drinks. So uh, go and have some fun, and then we'll have lightning talks a little later. So come in, oh, yes, yeah, thank you. Uh, when is a good question, which is pretty much right after, yeah, right now. <laughs> is there ever a better time than right now, right? Isn't there? Um, no, it's gonna be after uh, the keynote. Uh, this seems probably about 6.30 or so. Uh, is when that'll be. So also a little bit about me. Uh, again, my name is Robert Dempsey. I'm the CEO of ADS. We're a Rails development shop uh, here in Orlando. And uh, you know, I put this thing on with my co-chair, uh, Jason Cartwright. If you are thinking of doing a regional conference yourself, get one or more people to help you because it's, it's a hell of a lot of work. And so if you have a team, it's a lot easier. But you know, what I want to do is tell you all a story. And the story starts off with a couple developers. And you know, they're going uh, through their day-to-day -day development practice using certain tools. And they start having problems with those tools that they're using. They didn't like the way that this specific app worked. They didn't like the workflow that it imposed on them. And it was lacking features that they felt were really critical for the way in which they worked. And they knew that they could improve it. And so they did. In July of 2006, they launched this application. The entire thing was built using Rails. So that's a big thumbs up right there. And they immediately started getting feedback from users, which is a highly critical uh, component for when you actually put something out there. In April of 2007, they had their next uh, major release of the application. And then they were adding features practically on a monthly basis. On their blog, you can see it's just all these features, one right after the other, one right after the other, um, all based on user feedback. In December of 2008, they added a new member to their board. It was the first person that they had hired on since they started the thing. So it started with two guys. Right now, it's only three, right? Very small shop. And last year, they moved their entire platform to Amazon EC2 to solve their scaling problem. And that story is the story of Unfuddle, which is a <clears throat> project management system that you uh, may or may not be aware of. Uh, great stuff. So you might be thinking, OK, great. Well, you know, what does that have to do with Axis Conference? So we had a couple goals with the conference in general, and then this conference this year in, uh, specifically. And what we really wanted to do was set the tone for the coming year. Uh, generally, also, fl uh, Florida in February is nice, so I apologize for the weather. I'm talking with the man about that, see if we can get that worked out. Uh, Friday and Saturday are supposed to be better, from what I'm told. Um, but you know, we really wanted to sh show what's new, you know, what's the newest stuff in the Rails world, and then what's coming up, you know, what can we look for in the future. And this year, the theme that we wanted to do, uh, or at least uh, have uh, in the conference was maintaining a competitive edge. And I would say that Rails is competitive. And I would say that Rails itself is competitive because Rails is continuously improving. And this is one of the things that uh, David talked about uh, during the Q&A. It's improving uh, performance-wise, usability-wise, adding all of the internationalization features, and much more. And then I'm really looking forward to the integration of MERB with Rails also to see what comes out of that, because I like both. And I think a combination of the two, depending on how it's done, can be uh, pretty badass. But you know, so what does this really mean for us? It also means that we ourselves must improve. 
And there's a few ways that we ourselves can improve. It's going to conferences like this, reading books, coding, you know, reading other people's code uh, that's out there. And also, I mean, if you look, look around the room, you know, at everybody that's here even. Thank you, Jason. Um, and we have 130 people here, and uh, what I feel is a fantastic speaker lineup. You know, there's a wealth of Rails programming knowledge here, and I really urge you all to take advantage of that. One of the biggest takeaways that you can get, besides all of the, the really technical information that comes out of a conference, is making those connections. Later, if, you are, you know, if you're a freelancer or looking to uh, get more work that way, or if you end up saying, hey, you know, I'd like a full-time job or whatever, um, you know, the, the connections that you make in rooms like this can really help you out in those cases. So you know, talk with the, your fellow attendees and talk with the speakers also. And when I started going to Rails conferences, I was really worried about talking to the speakers because I put all these guys like way up here on pedestals. I know the first time that I went to RailsConf and I attempted to actually say something to DHH, I'm like, okay, you know, this is the guy that has allowed me to create a business that can sustain myself and my employees. You know, what, what do I say to this guy? It ended up being like, hi, I'm Robert Dempsey. Rails is awesome, and then I left. So, you know, try and be a little bit more conversational than that is my suggestion. But also, you know, I want to I want to challenge you all, and my challenge is this: you know, ideas themselves are nothing without action. And I'm sure that there are a huge amount of y'all out there with a lot of ideas of what you can do. And I would really challenge you within the next six months, right? So it's it's a relatively all right, time frame, we can get something done in six months. You know, release an app, release a Ruby gem, or release a Rails plugin. I mean, I know that y'all can do it. And as a little example of what you can do with very little resources, is this kind of a shameless plug. This is expensed. This is uh, an application that I built. And the way that this came about, I didn't even have the idea for this application. We were working with a marketing consultant. This guy's on Twitter continuously. He saw a sales guy uh, on Twitter complain about having to enter in uh, expenses using a spreadsheet. And he was saying, you know, uh, spreadsheets are really a PETA, and I have to send them, and they suck. So. My marketing guy said he saw this and he comes to us and he says, "Hey, you know, can you build an app that can kind of make it easier for people like remote teams to enter expenses?" And I said, "Sure." And when I looked into it, I found out it was a common problem. I spoke with someone earlier today and they said their company has you send in spreadsheets for uh, you know for expenses. And to me, that's ludicrous because of what we can do with the web. So. What I did was, I wrote the user stories, I worked with our designer, Erica Greco, who is awesome, and then I coded it up. So one OK developer, being me, one designer in two weeks. We went from basically having an idea to launching a 1.0 site uh, up and going, and we just did it. And so now, after a couple months, we have 704 accounts, enough customers to pay our hosting costs. And so for me, that's success. I mean, if we have really anybody using the damn thing that I wrote, then I figure that that's, you know, that's highly successful. And I know that if I can do it, I'm damn sure that y'all can do it. And I think one of the, <coughs> which actually takes us to our next slide, just do it. You know, all you really need, just like the unfuddle guys, is a desire to change something and then the will to make it happen. That's it. You know, you can build something, you can put it out there, and then what you do is you let your users drive it. So that to me also is the secret. I mean, it's the question to what is this? You know, what should I build? Because I'm always thinking, okay, well, how can we make money, et cetera, et cetera? You know, what should I build? How can we charge for that, et cetera? And <clears throat> really, if you start, and David has talked about this a lot too, I mean, Basecamp kind of solved one of their own problems, Rails came out of that, and look at the success they have now. Took more than a year to get going, but they did it, and he sat down, and he just coded the damn thing up, and look where they are today. So, you know, put yourself out there. Talk with other people, get ideas, because a lot of us in this room might have the exact same problems as well. And then it just takes one of y'all to actually code up an app, and then you already have a bunch of users. And another myth, and this is um, people that run shops or e freelancers, you know, well, I'm sure have heard this one, where customers come and they say, you know, we need this entire list of requirements in an application. And that's most likely not true. And the statistics show that most of the stuff that someone thought they might need ends up actually not being used whatsoever. So prioritization is a good thing, but that's another talk altogether. <clears throat> the point being, 
is that you know, make something basic. Get it out there, get people using it, and then let your users drive it. And that makes it easier for us. Because it's like, okay, if I start with this base set of features, I don't have to think of every possible way that someone might use my application. Let me get it out there, see how people use it, and then nine times out of 10, it could turn out completely different uh, than how you thought people might use it in the first place. So you know, take my challenge. Impress us with what you can do and help us by solving the problems that you find as well. Thank you. So just a couple of cleanup items too, probably a little late. Um, and I think I emailed everybody. The hashtag for like Flickr and uh, Twitter and all that good stuff is the AAC2009. Uh, if you're not on the event view site, everybody that registered should be on there. If you're not, let me know. Because you can like privately message other people uh, through the network and I can't even see you know, who you're trying to talk to or what you're saying to them. So um, I will be professional at all times. Um, and the tiny URL is being able to follow the, the live Twitter feed uh, that's going on as well. So our next speaker is John Larkowski from Hash Rocket, and we'll be uh, right back with him. Thank you.